Hello and welcome. My name is Suzanne and this is Julia. And today we'll be going through a rocket practice, a rocket yoga practice. This is a modified version of Rocket One. So hopefully everybody that is watching is able to join in. We've chopped and changed it and taken a few things out, but please feel free to add in as much as you want to if you want to take more sun salutations or a longer shavasana towards the end it's up to you that's perfectly fine and if you'd like to grab props like blocks you might want to use them for the practice as well and yeah aside from that just take everything at your own pace and have a bit of fun okay when we're ready let's meet at the top of our mats and julia can you bring either your big toes together space between heels or your feet hips distance apart Take a few moments, so relax the shoulders away from the ears. Can your hands rest by the side and then lift up through the crown of your head. If you want to, feel free to close down your eyes for a few moments and just begin to really connect to your breath. Inhaling and exhaling through the nose. And if you have Ujjayi Pranayama in your practice, I really encourage utilizing that as we move. So inhaling and exhaling through the nose, able to hear a very subtle sound by creating a slight restriction in the front back of your throat. When we're ready, hands by the side, you can blink open the eyes, Surya Mascara A, taking two rounds. Please feel free to add more if you want to, that's absolutely fine. Inhale, reach your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen the spine, Ardha Uttanasana. Modify first, exhale, hands to the mat, step to your high plank, long spine. Hold it for a moment. Slowly lower the knees to the mat, bend your elbows, lower all the way down. Tops of the feet press down, inhale, draw for the chest, baby cobra. Exhale takes you back to a downward facing dog. Let's stay here about three to five breaths. Please feel free to bend the knees as much as you need to in order to lengthen through the spine. So emphasize on lifting the sitting bones up. Your legs don't have to be straight right now. You might even start to pedal out the legs a little bit, bending one knee and straightening the others. The hands are very active. You're spreading the fingers wide and you're gripping them out with the fingertips. When we're ready, exhale, bend your knees, look forward. You can step or lightly hop to the top of your mat. On an inhale, lengthen your spine halfway. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, begin to reach your arms up overhead, maybe lift the gaze. Exhale, hands to your heart, Samasiti. Let's go again. Hands by the side, Tadasana first. Inhale, reach your arms up, maybe look up. Exhale, begin to fold forward over your legs. Inhale, lift you halfway to a long spine. Exhale, hands to the mat. You can step or lightly float back. And you can take Chaturanga like Julia is doing here or lower the knees like before. Inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, lift it back into a downward facing dog. Really nice. So breathing here. Try to keep the neck in line with the spine. So maybe gazing at the space in between the feet or up towards the knees. Keeping the shoulders rolling back away from the ears. So you have that nice space across the back. And like Julia here is keeping a lovely long spine as best we can. Let's take another... Breath in our downward facing dog. When you're ready, start to exhale, bend your knees, look forward, step or lightly, float the feet in between the hands. Inhale, lift you halfway up. Exhale, we fold forward. Inhale, arms reach up, maybe look up. Exhale, take your hands back to the heart. Surya Namaskara B. In our own time, bend the knees, inhale, maybe look up as you reach up, Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, we hinge and fold forward over the legs. Inhale, lengthen, halfway, prepare. Exhale, hands to mat, step or lightly float back. Lower the knees or take chaturanga. Inhale to cobra or up dog. The exhale takes you back to downward facing dog. Start to pivot your left foot out. Step your right foot in between the palms. Knee is bent. Inhale, lift up Virabhadrasana A, warrior one. Exhale, frame the right foot, step to plank. Take your vinyasa, lower knees or lower in one line. Inhale, lift the chest, cobra or up dog. Exhale to your downward facing dog. Pivot the right foot out, step your left foot forward. Press down through the feet, inhale, lifts you up, Virabhadrasana A, everything drawing in. Exhale, frame the foot, step back. 
Take your chaturanga or modify as you need to. Inhale to your cobra or a dog. Exhale takes you back to a downward facing dog. Catch your breath here. So these sun salutations will warm you up. We want to be warm as we move through our practice today, but move the pace of your own breath. Maintaining your ujjayi pranayama here, so you should be able to hear yourself inhale and exhale. So keeping those hands nice and active at the end of your next exhale, let's look forward, bend knees, step right, let you float the feet in between the hands. Inhale, lifts you halfway. Exhale, we fold. Bend your knees, sit back, Utkatasana. Hold for a moment. Exhale, hands to the heart, Samasiti, Sanyapal. One more round. Bend the knees, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, we fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Ardha Mukha Sanasana. Cobra or a dog. Exhale, Ardha Mukha Sanasana, down dog. Left foot out, right foot forward. The inhale lifts you up into warrior one. Exhale, frame the foot, Chaturanga. Modify as you need to. Inhale, Cobra or a dog. Exhale, chin to chest, down dog. Right foot out, left foot forward. Inhale, Virabhadrasana, keep the wrist in. Exhale, we frame the foot, look forward as you lower down. Inhale, Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, takes us back to downward facing dog. Breathing here. Are you feeling warm, Javier? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want to be warm. We want to be warm. Okay. Keeping the hands active. Again, you can keep a soft bend in the knees, but everything is lifting up and back. So you have that space along the back to breathe. One more round of breath here. At the end of the exhale, let's bend your knees, look forward, step or let you fill up the feet in between the hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, we fold. Bend the knees, sitting back with Katasana, chair pose. Hold for a moment. Exhale, hands to the heart. Samasiti. That's our warm up done. Step your feet hips distance apart. Prepare Ardha Utkatasana, half chair pose. Interlace the fingers to you. Reach the palms away from you. Begin to bend your knees. Sit down as if you were sitting into a chair. So you're aiming to get your thighs more or less parallel to the floor. Reaching the arms away and sitting back. Your knees are back so that you can see your toes. And if you need to modify, you could always take your arms by the side. But let's hold it here. Draw everything in. Two more breaths. See, can you sink down a little bit further into your imaginary chair? One more big deep breath. Well done, exhale, fold forward, prepare for your first arm balance. Hands to the mat, Vakasana Crow Pose. Hands right shoulder distance apart. Judy's gonna take her knees to the backs of the tricep. She's gonna squeeze everything into the midline. She's engaging her core. She's lifting her heels towards her sitting bones and she's looking forward, super important. So you could place something in front of you like a cushion. Let's take another big deep breath if you're still there. And then exhale, you can step or float back. And then inhale, move through your vinyasa so we meet back in a downward facing dog. Well done. Standing sequence, start by pivoting your left foot out, step your right foot forward. And an inhalation, let's lift up into warrior one, just like in our sun salutation B. Holding here, keeping the hips square to the front of the mat, drawing everything in. So rib cage is drawing in, energetically lifting up through the bandas, maintaining your ujjayi pranayama if you can. On your next inhale, open up Virabhadrasana B. So step the feet a little bit further away. More flexion in the right knee, opening the arms and aligning with the shoulders. And we breathe. Try to keep an equal distribution of weight between the left and the right foot. And then the right knee again is tracking out towards the outside of your right foot as best we can, just to keep external rotation in the right knee, in the right hip. Breathing here, one more round of breath. Vitita Trikonasana, triangle, straighten the right leg. Heel toe the left foot in if you need to close off the gap. Keep the chest face open, reaching with the right hand and let the fingertips either come to the shin, floor, or if you have a block nearby, you could place a block under the right hand. Everything is rotating open here, the chest, maybe looking up if it's okay in the neck. You can always look down if you need to modify. Breathing here. One more full inhalation. Exhale, let's look down, prepare for your vault trikonasana. You will step the left foot in a little bit closer and start to heel to the right foot to the right. So think feet on train tracks or if your feet were on a road, left foot and left lane, right foot and right lane. Inhale, reach forward at your left arm, Julia, just to lengthen your spine first. 
And then exhale, you'll reach the left hand to the outside of the right foot. And then your right arm will either spin open towards the ceiling, or you can take your right hand onto the right hip. You can keep a soft bend in the front knee if you wish, but try to really elongate the back leg and then press down firmly through both feet. She's drawing forward at the crown of the head so the spine stays nice and long. Everyone's favorite posture, one more round of breath. <laughs> well done, exhale, look down, take a bend into the right knee. Step your left foot back towards a warrior two position with the feet. And then setting up for side angle pose, right elbow could rest on the right thigh. Left arm might reach up towards the ceiling. You might reach the left arm and align it with the left ear. Whatever variation is in your practice, so you might have a bind in your practice, you might have a block underneath the right hand. The important thing here is that you keep nice space along the left side body as best we can. So we have space to breathe, all right? Let's take two more breaths here. One more round of breath. And then on exhale, look down. Press into the feet, open the arms back, warrior two. Prepare humble warrior. Take the hands behind, interlace the fingers, reach your hands away, lift open the chest. On an exhale, we hinge and we fold in the inside of the right knee. We're sending the right knee out to the right and our chest to the left. Keeping the hands interlaced, if that's okay, and the chest space open. She's really pressing down into this back foot in order to stay anchored through both feet. We're gonna get a burny right leg, but we're gonna be okay. One more end of breath. Press through the feet, lifts you up. Open back warrior two. Prepare for your twist, hands pressed together in front of the heart. Pivot forward onto the ball of your left foot. Square the feet. And then inhale, lift up through the chest. Exhale, left elbow outside of the right knee. Find your twist, your revolve side angle pose. You might keep the hands pressing together. You might open the arms. You might take whatever, a different variation, like a reverse bind. If you have very, very long arms, you can do, go for that. <laughs> Breathing here. Two more breaths, staying strong in the legs. So energetically drawing both knees towards each other, both feet towards each other. When we're done, exhale, look down, frame the foot, step back, you're out of there. <laughs> Move through your vinyasa. We'll meet back in a downward facing dog pose and there's some options that you can look at here. You could drop the knees and rest and take a child's pose for the next few breaths. You might start to slowly lower your elbows to the floor. Walk the feet in a little bit closer. Some people like to interlace the hands, some people just like to press the palms flat into the mat. Kind of like your downward facing dog, but you're on elbows. And now you have the option to just stay here. This is your edge, you stay here. You might start to lift the right leg up. So you're taking the weight out of the right leg, especially after press uh, after the standing sequence on the right side there. If you have Pincha Mayarasana in your practice, you might make your way to a forearm balance. Easy peasy. Breathe for three. Breathe for two. And on one, let's meet in a downward facing dog. <laughs> Easy. Easy side, you've already done this on the right. So when we're ready, pivot the right foot out, step your left foot forward in between the hands. Prepare for Virabhadrasana A, warrior one, the left side. So you're rooting down through both feet, nice bend in the left knee. Everything again is drawing in, your ribs are drawing in, and we're breathing. Next inhale, let's open up warrior two. Heel toeing the feet a little bit further away, more of a bend into the left knee now. Maybe the gaze goes forward as the arms open and align with the shoulders. Both legs are engaged here. Equal distribution of weight between the left and the right leg. Take another full inhalation. And let's prepare to Konasana. Start to slowly lengthen the left leg, maybe close off the gap. And then reaching forth your left arm, so this space stays open in the chest. Release your left fingertips to either the shin, to the floor. Maybe you have a block nearby for support. And then lift up through the right arm and open everything. The chest, rib cage opening as well. Keeping a slight engagement in the muscles at the tops of the legs. So the glutes and the hamstrings are engaged as well here. And we're breathing. On an exhale, let's look down, prepare for revolve trick and asana. Step the right foot in a little bit closer, heel toe the left foot to the left, so the feet are like they're on train tracks. 
And then Julio, reach for the right arm first, and then exhale, taking the hand either to the inside or outside of the foot, onto a block, of course, absolutely fine. And then the left arm will spin open and she takes her twist. So re-emphasizing on keeping the hips squared in this pose so your spine can stay nice and long. Maybe the gaze is down or maybe the gaze is up. So if your feet are in one line, try to take them apart so they're like on, they're on same tracks. Let's take another full breath here. On exhale, look down, prepare for side angle pose. Take a bend into the left knee and step your right foot back, just like warrior two feet again. Inhale, you can either take your elbow onto the thigh for support and reach the right arm up. You can take the left hand to a floor, the floor or a block, or maybe you have a bind in your practice, whatever suits you here, as long as you are breathing. So make sure you're taking nice full inhales and full exhales. You're really rooting down through the back foot as best you can. Let's take another full breath. Exhale, look down. Inhale, lift back up to warrior two. So we open the arms. Take the hands together at the small of your back. Let's prepare humble warrior. Reaching the hands away, open the chest. And on the exhale, you hinge and fold to the inside of that left knee. The left knee is moving out to the left and your torso is going towards the right. And you're going to really target the left glute, the left hamstring and the left hip here. What's very important is that you're pressing firmly into the back foot. So not everything is shifting forward. Are we okay? <laughs> Press into your feet. Inhale, lifts you up out of there, warrior two. Well done. Press the palms together in front of the heart, pivot forward towards your left leg. So you come onto the ball of your right foot, high lunge position with the legs. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, take the right elbow to the outside of the left knee, either keeping the palms pressing together, maybe hand to the floor and reaching up. And if you have a reverse bind in your practice, you might move towards a reverse bind. So there's a lot of options that you can work with here. You move to the place where you can breathe best in. Two more breaths. One more big deep breath. Exhale, let's look down. Frame the left foot, step it back plank. You're out of there. Move through your vinyasa. And let's meet in a downward facing dog. Same options as the other side. You can stay in this posture. You might drop the knees and take a rest in a child's pose. That's absolutely fine. You might slowly start to lower the elbows down, hugging the elbows in towards each other, hugging the triceps towards each other. Hands can be flat or palms can be together. You might just stay here in your dolphin. You might walk the feet in a little bit closer, stay here. You might lift one leg and hold. And if you have pincha mayras in your practice, you might lift up to a forearm balance. Your gaze is slightly forward as you're coming up. You're breathing for two. <laughs> and on one, let's take a child's pose for three breaths, all right? Catching your breath. And you can stay in your child's pose for as long as you like. That's absolutely fine. But when we're ready, Let's tuck the toes under, reach the hands forward, make our way to a down facing dog. So we want to move from a down dog towards a forward fold at the back of our mat. You might walk the hands back towards your feet or spread the fingers, bend the elbows out to the side away from you, scoop the belly in, one exhale, we press the floor away and try to shoot back towards our feet. And then when we're ready, we find a forward fold. So you can take a rag doll, or if you have palogostas in your practice, you hook the peace fingers around the big toes. You inhale, just like Julia did there, to lengthen first. And then an exhale, you pull the elbows away from each other and take a nice forward fold. So your legs don't have to be straight here. You can bend the knees as much as you need to, just like Julia has here. The real emphasis is the lengthening of the spine and she's drawing the crown of the head down and the elbows away from each other. So you can stay in this forward fold, or if you're ready, inhale, look forward, Padahastasana, palms of hands under the soles of the feet. And again, she'll draw the crown of the head down and bend the knees as much as she needs to. And if anything, this is just a really nice way to counteract all the movement that we did there with the planks and the chaturangas and the down dogs, give the wrists a little bit of a massage. When you're ready, inhale, let's look forward. Exhale, take your hands onto the hips. 
Inhale, standing tall. Exhale, relax your shoulders. We'll move towards Prasarita. So Julia's going to take a big step to the long edge of your mat. Yeah. So comfortable distance with the feet. Aligning the outside of the feet with the short edge of the mat more or less. Maybe the toes pointing in slightly. We'll take Prasarita A and C. So just two. Hands to hips first to begin. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, we hinge and forward fold. Word fold. So you can bend the knees again if you need to. Your hands might meet the mat. If not, maybe take a prop, like a block underneath. Maybe the crown of the head meets the mat. If you have a comfortable established tripod headstand in your practice, you might take the crown of the head to the floor, come forward onto the tiptoes, engage, elbows hugging in, just like Chaturanga Dandasana. And we're lifting up. If you don't have tripod headstand in your practice, you're just staying in the forward fold. Staying with the breath. Two more rounds of breath. And if you are in tripod, like Julia here, you're slowly going to open the legs, tilt your pelvis, and then gently, gently come back down to earth. Well done. On an inhale, everybody will lengthen halfway. Exhale, hands onto the hips. Inhale, lift up through the crown of your head. Exhale, relax for a moment. We'll take Prasari to C next. On an inhale, reach your arms out nice and long. Exhale, interlace the hands at the small of your back, reaching the hands away, open the chest. And then exhale, we hinge and forward fold. So hands move overhead, your chest space stays open. If this is too much on the shoulders, just make your way to the first, bear, the first posture that we did with the hands down, if that's okay. But here, think of trying to let the hips move a little bit further forward so you're not sinking backwards. Soften your gaze, but maintain your ujjayi breath even here. Keeping the hands together, press down firmly through the feet. A very, very slow inhale lifts you all the way up. And then relax the shoulders, open the arms. Start to heel toe your feet a little bit further away, further away. And then we're going to sit down Upavishta Kanasana. So in a wide-legged seated position. Now you can cheat and just sit down, or you can take your hands behind you, flip the palms away, and then try to very, very slowly lower by shifting the weight onto the hands, onto the arms, maybe lifting the feet up, and then lowering down. Well done. So you can keep a little bend in the knees. Let's just take an easy forward fold for a moment here. You can have a prop in front of you. On an inhale, you're lengthening your spine. On exhale, you're forward, folding forward. And we'll just stay here for a few breaths. It's really emphasizing on an opening of the hips. The V doesn't have to be super big. The knees can be a little bit closer together and the feet closer together. Two more breaths here. And then we'll walk the hands back in. We'll close off the V and we're going to look at a bit of arm balancing and um, Ashtra Bhakrasana. So you can take the feet a little bit closer together. There's a lot of ways we can look at this and uh, you just take whatever variation you feel like taking today. So you're going to keep your right leg straight, bend your left knee. <laughs> bend your left knee and you're going to try and take the left leg over your left arm like a backpack. You crazy pose, yeah. So the knees just somewhere in between the elbow and the shoulder, it doesn't have to go over your head or anything crazy like that. And then you're taking the hands and framing the leg that's along, so the right leg, and they can be on blocks if you have blocks nearby. And on exhale, you're going to forward fold over the leg that's long, squeeze everything into the midline, and then press the floor away, lift up. And you can just stay exactly as you are here. You might start to cross the ankles. And then you might start to move out to the side and counterbalance the weight of the lower body with the upper body in the head. She's bending her right elbow out to the side again as, as a counterbalance for the body, engaging everything and hugging it into the midline. If you have Kundinyasana, you might take Kundinyasana. Otherwise, oh, she's going yeah. for it. She's going for it. <laughs> Just an extra add-on if you want. And then slowly... Or however you want to get there, let's meet on the mat. Take a breath. <laughs> well done. And then we'll move to the other side. So the same, same again. You backpack the right leg over the right arm. 
Hug everything quite close into the midline of the body. You're taking the hands to frame the leg that's long, somewhere in between the knee and the hip, so not too far back. We compress first, so we fold and squeeze everything into the middle line. We press the floor away and maybe just hold it here. Hold it, hold it, hold it. If you want to cross the ankles, you can. Then you might move out to the side, counterbalance with the upper body, hugging everything into the middle line and steadying the gaze. Just stay as you are, wherever you are. If you want to take Kundinyasana, you can. Just options. Notice how she's creating balance by counterbalancing everything as she moves and she's engaging everything. Awesome. When we're ready, let's turn towards the front of our mat and come towards Navasana or bow pose. And we're just gonna use this as a transition. So bending the knees, maybe the hands underneath the thighs, and then lifting the heels up, aligning the calves with the parallel to the floor. She can stay here, she might straighten the legs. We're not gonna hold it for too long. Her spine is nice and long and everything is engaged. On an exhale, she's going to bend the knees, hug them in towards her chest, and then either step, cross the ankles and either just step back to a down dog or jump back and take a full vinyasa. So whatever you feel like doing, either full vinyasa or just making your way to a downward facing dog and catching our breath. And then we'll look at seated sequence now. So she's going to bend the knees and look forward, step one foot forward or maybe cross the ankles and come to a little hop through the hands and come to sit. However you want to get there, some people like to have props underneath their hands to help with that transition. Dandasana, the legs are lengthening out in front of her. She's flexing the feet so the feet are engaged. Hands are by the side, she'll lift up to the crown of the head and relax the shoulders for a moment. Connect to your breath here, and then let's move towards Paschimottanasana, a forward fold. You can bend the knees as much as you need to. Inhale, lengthen first. Exhale, to hinge and begin to forward fold over the legs. And the hands might be at the calves, at the ankles, maybe the, hand, the hands are around a strap, or they're hooking the feet, fingers around the toes, elbows out to the side, just like we did in the forward fold, fold forward earlier on. Let's take another breath here. Use a slow inhale to sit up tall. Hands by the side. Mula Bandha Chekka for L sit. So the hands are going to be somewhere in between the knees and the hips. If the hands are too far back, you're just not gonna go anywhere. All right, so don't think about it. She's gonna take her hands by her side, bend the elbows, and again, forward fold. Compress everything and try to keep that space as close together as you can for as long as you can. And then pressing the floor away, she's gonna lift up. Maybe hold for three. Breathing two, and on one, she'll lower down. We'll take a modified variation of our core and seated work. She's just straight away going to lower back onto her back and come onto her elbows and her forearms and spread the fingers by the side, lifting up the chest. She'll point the toes and lengthen the legs. Everyone's favorite part again. Lift the legs up, pointing the toes. Everything is engaged here, especially the core. Keep the left leg up and then begin to slowly lower the right leg. Hover it off the mat, lift the right leg back up, left leg lowers, hover, lift it back up. Right leg lowers, hovers, lift it back up. Left leg hovers, lift it back up. Right leg, hover, lift it up. Left leg, hover, lift it up. Hold it here, lower the legs halfway down, lift up Navasana. And then you can bend the knees, roll forward, either just step back to down dog or take a full vinyasa if you prefer. If you can jump back, you can do that too. Some options to look at when you're in your downward facing dog. Either just stay here for about five breaths. You can take a little rest. If you have handstand in your practice, this is the part where you might start to step one foot in, maybe step the other one in a little bit closer. And it won't be the last hand sign, so don't worry about it. If you have a wall nearby that you want to practice with a wall, of course, you can do that too. And when we're ready, let's meet in the downward facing dog. Start to bend the knees, look forward. Either step the feet or take a little hop, come to sit. Janu Shirsasana A. Julia's going to straighten her left leg, bend the right knee and take the sole of the foot to the inside of the thigh. So it's kind of like tree with the with the 
legs. <laughs> lengthening the left leg, flexing the left foot. She'll inhale, lengthen her spine. Exhale, fold forward over the left leg. And again, wherever is available here, maybe the hand is towards the knee or towards the calf or towards the push. Really think of this space here in the back where you're going to be sending the breath, the cue up, and keep it nice and length in your spine. On your next inhalation, slowly lift up, straighten both legs, round two, core work. Let's lower back onto our forearms, take the fingers, spread them wide, come onto the elbows, press into the forearms, pointing the toes. Slowly begin to lift the legs up, keep pointing the toes. Julia's going to start to slowly crisscross her ankles, her feet. Keep crisscrossing, keep crisscrossing. As the legs lower down, she's crisscrossing. And she's doing it again as they lift up, slowly, slowly, slowly. And again, she's lowering down. Everything, the legs are staying close together, so they're not swaying out to the side. And she's breathing. The next time your legs are halfway, Julia, keep the legs together. Lift it up, Navasa. And then rolling forward, bend the knees, step or flip back. Take a vinyasa. Meeting in downward facing dog, option to stay here, option to rest, or option round two, hand standing practice. You might step one foot in and just come towards like a standing split, lifting one leg and think of shifting the weight into the hands. Really good place to practice. Um, and if you have hand stand, you might start to slowly lift it up. Breathing, breathing. Draw everything into the midline. If you're in your hand stand, you're pressing the floor away as much as you can. And when we're ready, let's meet in a downward facing dog. Also, look forward, step or jump through to sit. And just the same thing with the other leg now, Jenny Fusasana A. Straightening the right leg, flex the right foot, sole the left foot against the right thigh. You're turning your chest towards the leg that's long. You're inhaling, finding length first, and then exhaling, folding forward over the leg. The knee could be bent, the leg doesn't have to be straight. If anybody has knee issues going on, it can be quite handy to have a block underneath the knee that's bent. So if you're okay here, again, noticing your breath. We're not losing the breath, even in the forward folds. Another round. Then in our own sign, let's release. Inhale, sitting up, straightening both legs out in front of us. Coming back onto the elbows, onto the forearms, spreading the fingers, pointing the toes, lifting both the legs up. Keep the legs together now. Engaging the core, slowly lower the legs together, hover them off the mat, and then very, very slowly lift it up. So this will help with your handstands, lowering down, hover, and then lifting it up, hopefully. <laughs> lower down and hover, and lift it up. Lower, hover, legs engage, lift it up. Lower the legs halfway, hold it there for a moment, holding, breathing three, breathing two, on one, lift it up, Navasana. Cross the ankles, hug the knees in, step or float through. Either just a down dog or take a full vinyasa. When we do meet back in downward facing dog, round three, you can just stay as you are. You might step one foot in and maybe look at standing split. Or if you have handstand in your practice, you might look at doing some handstanding, hand balancing. If you have a wall, you want to use your wall, you can finding a place to gaze at, pressing the floor away as best we can. Whole body is active. You got it. <laughs> and then in our own time, let's meet back in a downward facing dog. Let's look forward, jump through to sit. And then taking the feet together, Julia, and these wide batter kanasana. Your hands can be around the strap, or maybe the hands are around the feet or ankles. She'll inhale, lengthen her spine first, and then exhale gently forward folds. You're giving the hips a bit of a stretch now. You're still aware of your breathing. It's the same inhale, same exhale. Some people like to use their elbows. It's just a bit of feedback on the inside of the thighs. And then use a slow inhale to 
come up. Draw the knees towards each other, shimmy a little bit further forward, and then we're going to come down to lie on our backs. We'll set up for back bending. We'll look at bridge first, and then maybe wheel if you have wheel in your practice. All right, so she'll take the feet hips distance apart, knees hip distance as well, hands are by the side. She's pressing the feet into the floor, moving the knees and shins away from her, engaging the muscles in the back line of the legs as she slowly lifts the pelvis up, the belly and the chest. And the hands can stay by the side or interlace underneath, maybe roll the upper arms over the shoulder blades. The chest is moving towards the chin, and the chin is moving away from the chest. And her gaze is at the ceiling. And if this is where you're at in your practice, you're just going to stay with the bridge, okay? Otherwise, we'll look at wheel next. So hands by the side, Julia. Keep your hips up and then slowly lower down upper back, mid back and lower back. And let the posture kind of settle and let your spine settle as well. We'll take another back bend. So you can take the one that we just did. If you have Urdhva Dhanurasana wheel posture in your practice, same setup with the feet, but this time you're taking your hands by the ears, elbows are pointing towards the ceiling. She's going to engage the muscles in the backs of the legs. So you move the knees and shins forward, press the hands into the earth as she lifts her chest up and then maybe back. The hands are quite active here. It's really, really focusing on the front line of the body opening and breathing. Two more breaths. And then think of coming out slowly, so bending the elbows, chin to chest, maybe back of the head to the floor first. And again, everybody's coming down very, very slowly to the mat. Take a few moments, Julia. If you want to take another back bend, please feel free to do so. If you'd like to take a drop back, standing up and dropping back into your wheel, you can do that. Otherwise, walking the feet to the edge of the mat, keeping the knees bent. We're just going to gently windscreen wipe your knees from left to right. So we'll just massage out the lower back and the sacrum and bring a little bit of rotation into the spine after doing back bends. And then Julia is going to hug the knees in towards the chest. Stay here or begin to slowly flex the feet, bend the knees and come towards a happy baby pose. So the soles of the feet are shining up towards the ceiling. You can take the hands to the backs of the thighs, maybe roll a little bit from side to side just to take the weight and the pressure out of the legs. So we're going to start to wind down now and slow down the practice. Opening of the hips. The V doesn't have to be super big. The knees can be a little bit closer together and the feet closer together. Two more breaths here. And we'll set up for an inversion. If you don't have Shirsasana in your practice, headstand in your practice, please feel free to either just stay in the happy baby that we were doing there. If you have shoulder stand in your practice, you can take a shoulder stand. If you're beside a wall and want to just rest your legs against the wall, please feel free to do so. If you have Shirsasana in your practice, you might take the hands together, creating a little basket with the hands, crown the head into the hands. She's pressing into her elbows and her forearms. It's almost like being in that Pincha Marasana shape again. All the weight is in her arms and her shoulders. There's relatively little weight in her head. And then she was slowly floating the feet up. She wasn't kicking. She wasn't using a lot of momentum at all. Everything is in the core. And she then she's coming up and catching that balance but all of the weight and support in the arms and the shoulders. And just using this as a way to reverse the energy in the body. And again, think of slowing down now, but do maintain the same breath that we've been keeping throughout the practice as best we can. So you're aiming for maybe eight to 12 breaths in your inverted pose. So maybe you're still in your child's pose or your happy baby. Maybe you're in your shoulder stand. Maybe the legs are up against the wall. If you are in sheer sasana and you want to come towards B with the legs coming down towards a 90 degree angle and just kind of testing the core a little bit here while well done and holding it for a few breaths. And then when we're ready, Julie will slowly be coming down, down, down. See, she's softly landing. There's no thud. 
And then resting in the child's pose for a few breaths. Let everything that we've just done step up. Breathing into the back, relaxing the shoulders. She's sitting back towards the heels. So you can either stay in your child's pose for a few more breaths, or you can move through one more vinyasa if you feel like moving, tucking the toes under, lifting into a downward facing dog. So sitting bones up and back, downward facing dog first. Yeah, catch your breath. Come high into the shape toes, ripple through the spine, find your plank, and then move through your vinyasa. Moving slowly, moving carefully. And you can either just drop the knees, come to sit, or take one last little hop, come to sit, before lying down onto your mat. So moving slowly, moving carefully, taking your time. And if there's other little movements that you'd like to do, if you'd like to take another little twist, if you want to add layers, if you want to grab props like a blanket or a bolster under the knees before settling into a comfortable position. So the legs can be long, the feet fall away from each other, hands by the arms by the side, palms face ceiling, shoulders are soft. And sometimes this can be the hardest pose in the whole practice, is the pose where we do nothing. Um, so please feel free to take time now. You might close down the eyes or just soften the gaze at one place. I invite you to relax the breath, so let go of your ujjayi pranayama. Release and let go of any engagement within the body, so the muscles and the entire surface of your skin. So relaxing the face as best we can. And this is a place where you want to settle and let your body receive the benefits of the practice. We've had a pretty strong practice, so give yourself the time now to simply relax. And you are welcome to stay in your Shavasana for as long as you wish. You can be there for a few minutes, five, ten, whatever you feel like. And whenever you do feel ready, like coming up, start to slowly bring movement back into the body. So maybe wiggling toes, wiggling fingers, you might move the head just gently from side to side. And if you have the space, it might feel nice to reach the arms up overhead and lengthen the legs out long and then stretch the whole body like it's the first stretch of the day. Take a bend into the knees and roll over to the right side of your mat. Maybe pausing there for a few moments. And then when you feel ready, making your way up to find a comfortable seat. And you can have the eyes closed or just softening the gaze at one place. Allow the spine to lengthen, the shoulders to roll back, taking a few moments to find your seat before taking the hands together in front of the heart center, gently bowing your head towards your heart. Thank yourself for making it to the mat today. Thank you so much for joining myself and Julia. Jai. 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 Which means victory. <laughs> Thank you.